Georgi, World Bank is actively involved in supporting um, GITA and the startups. Mm -hmm. uh, and very briefly, let us listen to Sebastian Molenius from the World Bank. He had a very important focus on where the jobs come from, the real jobs come from. Um, and once again, it is useful to think about such things, especially at times that the current pandemic naturally increases the tolerance towards a bigger state and its bigger involvement in the economy and business. So the question then is, where do you create jobs? And jobs are not created in the public sector. About worldwide, about 10% of jobs are created in the public sector. 90% of all jobs are created in the private sector. So then you dig a little bit deeper and say, where in the private sector? And in fact, it's high growth firms, unsurprisingly, that create jobs. And it's not necessarily the large firms, medium firms, and small firms all together. It's high growth firms that, want, or that are going to create new employment opportunities. And I think that it's all of you, again, collectively, that are creating new firms that will hopefully be dynamic, that will grow, and will continue to create those uh, employment opportunities for the people here in Georgia. Very good point, Elena, indeed. Earlier in your interview, Elena's interview, <laughs> uh, she briefly mentioned about Georgia's Angel Investors Club. And I will tell now our viewers and followers that our reporter, she's not junior reporter anymore. No, no she's, she's not. Reporter. Yeah. <laughs> our reporter, Anna Tavadze, talked to Nelson Gray, acting Angel Investor, a recipient of Queen's Award for Enterprise Promotion and uh, who has advice to share for those in Georgia who are taking first steps to expand this practice in the country and to contribute to what Mr. Molineos was stressing just a few minutes ago in the checkpoints. Thank you for finding the time. The, the checkpoints is happy to host you. Um, so, Mr. Gray, you've been a business angel investor for over 20 years and you're recognized internationally as a thought leader and a public speaker. Um, so we want to know how and when did you start and uh, why did you decide to get into this field? I think, um, I think suggesting that I made a positive decision to get involved in this field is overstating it. I kind of accidentally drifted into this. Um, I was fortunate to be able to sell some businesses back in 1993-94 uh, um, and found myself at the age of about 35, 36 with nothing to do but a reasonable financial position. And looking around for other things to do, I, I came across this idea of becoming involved in other people's businesses and funding them. I'm not even sure we called it business angel activity then. Um, but it looked pretty interesting because I got to engage with some really interesting people doing stuff that um, was probably impossible, but that's why they were, you know, so successful later on. And I just gradually got a buzz out of, of doing it. And it's been a, almost an accidental journey from doing my first investment through to uh, running an angel investment uh, group to running a fund to being able to travel internationally to exciting places like Georgia. I, we, we can talk about the financial returns, and they obviously can be nice, but they take a while. But I think, I think the the real highlights come from making a difference. And I use a couple of examples of companies for that. The first is the second company I ever invested in, a company called Optos, which uses a laser to take pictures of the back of people's eyes, and we literally created something that saves people's lives and saves people's sight. And we used to get letters in from people saying, you know, because of your technology, which is brand new, you have saved the life of my child or you've saved the sight of my granny or whatever it is. And that's a hugely powerful thing to be able to be involved in. On the other hand, something relatively industrial or ordinary seeming uh, would be a company called Oregon Timber. Now, it makes timber frame house kits for large construction companies in the UK. And a few years ago, my wife and I went down to the site where they're opening up their second big construction factory. And there were nearly 200 people on site. And that's the biggest employer in that region of Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, sub, I think, the, well, actually, I think it's the second. I think Tesco's supermarket is the biggest. But uh, we, we had created something that employed directly about 200 people and supported the local economy tremendously well. 
Uh, and that was a really kind of powerful feeling as well, that you created something that was affecting so many people's lives in a very positive way. Thank you. Well, you mentioned um, Georgia, and I know that you've been here and you're interested in Georgia and you've observed the scene for a while. So um, may I ask you, what opportunities do you see in Georgia in terms of um, investment opportunities? And what are your general impressions about um, business doing in Georgia? Well, I, I have to be careful because I, I have managed to visit Georgia twice before the lockdown. And uh, so I, it would be presumptuous of me to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make um, significant statements. So I can only give you a few personal impressions. But it's a delightful place to visit. It's first, first off, um, it's friendly. It seems open. Uh, the people are happy to talk. Um, so that's all. I find that all very positive. And I find the people I talk to very positive, which is is good. They're, they're looking uh, positively at how to move forward, how to do things, how to engage internationally. Uh, and I think those are the, the fundamental foundations for uh, building something which could be quite special. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think it's, it's relatively early days, obviously, in this um, particularly early stage angel investing scene. But all the bits are there. Uh, and what I'm hoping to do is encourage those uh, the, 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 the components to come together uh, and, and be significant. Thank you. Well, well, Georgia does have a um, promising startup scene uh, with many bright minds trying to solve many issues and come up with effective solutions. So what insights from your experience would you share with them? Uh, any tips or advice about the absolute musts that they should incorporate in their decision making? Well, I, 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 we, we could talk about how to build a business for a very long time. But I'd like to, I think we should focus perhaps on my key area, which is the kind of raising the funding and the investment. So let's have a look at that. But bef even before that, I do say to uh, founders, entrepreneurs, want to be entrepreneurs, that uh, this will absorb your life and uh, don't treat it as a hobby. And I say the only people who should become founders and entrepreneurs are those people who can't sleep at night because they're not founders and entrepreneurs. It really has to be a passion that you're driven for because it will take your life for many years. And I would also urge people to take the journey with their family as well, because this is going to impact on, on your wider, wider social circumstances. It will affect your immediate family. Um, so take them on the journey with the, with you and make sure they also wish to be committed to it. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, really look at why you want to do this, because mm -hmm. I think some founders end up being disappointed in the way in the results of seeking funding because they haven't thought through the implications. Mm -hmm. So people start businesses for very many reasons. You know, I want to work for myself. I want to have more time with my family, um, whatever it happens to be. If you go down the equity investment route, there are certain baggages that you take with you. One, you are sharing ownership of your business with somebody else. And secondly, it is an investment. So mm -hmm. the investor is looking for a return, and that return is usually uh, the sale of the business either to a larger corporation or to an IPO. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to have a business partner, if you don't want to build something which will eventually be sold or exited by IPO, again, um, perfectly reasonable, but don't go down this route. So I'd, I'd ask you to do a, that homework and that really deep looking into your personal motivations before you start. Thank you. Um after you know what I imagine was dozens of deals and global experience, um, what advice would you give to investors specifically? Uh, maybe perhaps with a special emphasis um, on Georgia. It is fair to say that every 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 country I visit uh, is concerned that somehow they are different, and they're often concerned that somehow they are not as advanced or not as developed as other countries. And I can assure you that that is not the case, that, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually doing some work just now in, uh, 
in a part of England to try and develop angel activity. And it isn't particularly more developed than it is in Georgia right now. So just, you know, don't under play uh, your position uh, and don't think that somehow uh, because you're at the beginning of a journey here, you're, you're, you're anyway lesser than anywhere else. So first mm -hmm. of all, have that confidence and realization that there is a global angel community, that you are becoming part of that global investment community and you can reach out to it. And that it is uh, generally a very friendly and welcoming community and people will be there to help you and guide you uh, and help you not make the mistakes that we've made uh, along along the way. So I think, you know, first of all, don't put yourselves down in any way. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think for new investors uh, coming to this, uh, it is appropriate to realize there's actually quite a lot to learn. Uh, even the most experienced business people, and certainly I myself, my first angel investment was a total and utter disaster. It was really, there was nothing right about it at all. Um, but I, you know, having built and sold the business for fairly reasonable money, I thought I was the master of the universe and uh, angel investing found me out fairly quickly. Um, so do it uh, with others and do a little bit of research and don't commit too much to one deal to start with. Uh, I think a, a, a number of business people think that they should do it themselves. They put a large amount of their own money into one or two companies. And frankly, that's not what you should be doing. Everywhere I go, it is uh, come together in groups, come together in syndicates, share the work, share the deals, spread the risk. Mm -hmm. I think motivation uh, is, is critical. Mm -hmm. Frankly, if all you're interested in doing is making money, then this is probably not for you yet. This is about making a difference and making a better future for uh, a country, for your children, for whatever. And the, the financial return can take a long time to come. But the social return, if you like, the enjoyment, the feedback of actually creating something new and exciting and making a difference to the world, that's what feeds the, uh, the angel investors uh, for the first few years. And that's what you really want to connect to. Angel Investors Club has been established in Georgia. Um, what are your expectations in terms of their impact? And can, can you elaborate more? Because you spoke so wonderfully about the social uh, reward that you get from this job. So um, what, what are your expectations in this regard? And maybe any particular advice to the founders of the club? Because I know that you are in touch with I, them. I, yeah. So, well, first of all, I think that the establishment of a, an angel club or um, uh, an angel group, as, as might also be referred to, is critically important, not just for the, at the founders level or, or the, the investors level, but frankly, at a Georgian national level. Um, if you look at the, both the data and personal experience, Angels that are organized into a club or a group invest more money and invest more successfully than one-off single angels all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I can see that uh, impact, particularly over the last 12 months with COVID, where uh, countries um, where angels are organized into clubs have generally not seen any uh, reduction in the level of investment that's been going on. In countries where angel investing is not organized, you've seen quite a dramatic fall down. So this is significantly important at a, at a, at a national level to create something which is robust, that uh, gives access to many people to become angel investors and put money into uh, new companies and build a real community. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to help those investors do it more effectively and more efficiently and, and, and frankly, better. Mm -hmm. So um, good investments make better companies and better survival rates. And we can educate them that, you know, at, the, at one level, an angel investor does not take 55% of the ownership of a company. This is a minority game. So we, we have to educate people. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have great hopes that this is the beginning and uh, we will be able to uh, take steps forward and create different uh, syndicates of 
uh, of, of interest uh, in the country. Groups or clubs work best when they're made up of people who have a common investment philosophy and, and, and understand and trust each other. Uh, and I think that's the, the first principle is uh, building trust amongst the investors and having a common philosophy because you know if if you have somebody in the group who wants to exit a company in six months and others are content to do it properly and wait a few years that you you need like-mindedness there and i think you need to have a a a realistic understanding of how long it's going to take and provide Mm -hmm. that education and then uh follow that uh, common theme through building what i call entrepreneurial wealth. I don't propose to maximize shareholder return or investor return. My philosophy is to build entrepreneurial wealth. If we make the founders and the company big and large, then we will uh, also get our share back. But -hmm. it's a different way of looking at things. It's not about maximizing shareholder value in the short term. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage that. Um, And I would encourage sharing. I believe that... um, Frankly, I don't know anybody in the world who can pick winners in this game. Uh, We all make our first investments and we all uh, try to do our best. And every investment we make, we think is going to be a winner. But the reality is, I don't know. So I would much rather share my deals with other people to bring them in. So we've got a wide shareholder base to support the company in the long term. And I think that sharing attitude um, is very important to making this work. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gray. Hey guys, stay tuned, subscribe, and follow us on BMG.